those that don't know what HARP is, it's an ionosphere heater that's part of these programs. So as they spray these particulates, it makes the atmosphere more conductive, more electrically conductive. These are incredibly huge and powerful ground-based facilities that they use to manipulate these particulates. So when you have the polarization of these particulates that's sensitive to radio frequency, they can cause those particulates to scatter out and cover the sky, or they can cause them to attract and come together and form big enough condensation nuclei to cause rain. Again, playing God with the weather, with extremely toxic materials. That facility can put out about 3 billion watts of power, billion with a B. Uh, it's capable of heating the ionosphere to 15,000 degrees Fahrenheit over areas hundreds of square miles. What they're doing to our climate system is beyond science fiction, but it's fact. This looks like something from a science fiction movie. That's the same type of facility on a mobile platform. It's called SBX radar, sea-based X-band radar, for the same purpose, manipulating the climate system. Most magical tool. Um, it's like a, a looking glass into a hidden world, and through the numerous ways that we can apply cymatics, we can actually start to unveil the substance of things not seen. Devices like the cymoscope that you can see here are being used to scientifically observe cymatic patterns, and the list of scientific applications is growing every day. For example, in oceanography, a lexicon of dolphin language is actually being created by basically visualizing the sonar beams that the dolphins emit, and hopefully in the future we'll be able to gain some deeper understanding of how they communicate. We can also use cymatics for healing and education. This is an installation developed with school children where their hands are tracked, and it allows them to control and position cymatic patterns and the reflections that are caused by them. We can also use cymatics as a beautiful natural art form. This image here is created from a snippet of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony playing through a cymatic device. So it kind of flips things on its head a little bit. And this is Pink Floyd's machine um, playing in real time through the cymatics. We can also use cymatics as a looking glass into nature, and we can actually recreate the archetypal forms of nature. So, for example, here on the left, we can see a snowflake, as it would appear in nature, and then on the right, we can see a cymatically created snowflake. And here's a starfish and a cymatic starfish, and there's thousands of these. So, what does this all mean? Well, there's still a lot to explore, and it's early days, and there's not many people... for reduction of global warming. We have 150 patents. Why would they make patents if there wasn't something going on? Why would patents go all the way back to 19, the late 40s? We have a long list of patents, again, about 150, and the exact ingredients we see in these patents, this one was assigned to Hughes Aircraft in 1991, oxides of metal. Why do they use metal? Why do they use aluminum? Because aluminum reflects, and that's, that's the stated purpose of these programs solar radiation management to reflect the sun. The rub is they're destroying Earth's natural protection by doing this. How much sense does that make? So Shiva, what are your thoughts on geoengineering? It is the idea of being able to engineer our lives on this very fragile and complex and interrelated and interconnected planet that's created the mess we are in. It's an engineering paradigm that created the fossil fuel age, that gave us climate change. And Einstein warned us and said, you can't solve problems with the same mindset that created them. Geoengineering is trying to solve the problems with the same old mindset of controlling nature. And the phrase that was used of cheating, let's cheat. You can't cheat nature. That's something people should recognize by now. Uh, there is no cheating possible. It's
eventually the laws of Gaia determine the final outcome. We need that sunlight for photosynthesis. The geoengineers don't realize sunshine is not a curse on the planet. The sun is not the problem. The problem is the mess of pollution we are creating. So again, we can't cheat. And the final issue is that these shortcuts that are attempted from places of power, and I would add places of ignorance, of the ecological web of life, are then creating the war solution because geoengineering becomes war on a planetary scale with ignorance and blind spots instead of taking the real path which is helping communities adapt and become resilient.